Hi there, my name's Annette with Sunbeam Fabric Art. Welcome to my channel. Not too long ago, I did a video for layer cake number 14. Well, this one, layer cake number 14B, expounds just a little bit on the first one. So in the first uh, layer cake number 14 video, what I did was I took lights and darks, I made one simple cut, put them all back together, matching up lights with a dark, and made two baby size quilts. And that one cut made a simple star. In this video, I'm gonna show you what happens if you make two cuts. So come along with me and I will show you what I did. For today's video, I did not want to open up a brand new package of layer cakes. So what I did was I have a little stack of layer cake leftovers. So I looked through that and I picked out 16 lights and 16 darks and I just happened to have 16 white, which I definitely wanted to use to see how that was going to turn out. Just like in my layer cake number 14 video, I'm stacking a dark layer cake and then a light layer cake, and I'm stacking them up as high as I feel comfortable cutting. Once I had my stack all straightened up, I laid it lined up with lines on my cutting mat. And then the only trick is to decide where you wanna make your cuts. You can choose any kind of cut you want. For these, I am cutting four across the top, four inches, and then I'm cutting two inches up from the bottom, placing my ruler and making that diagonal cut. Then for the second cut, now this is a little bit tricky. I decided to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm counting three inches up from the bottom and two inches across from the left. Now I just need to move these over to my left and start another stack to cut until all 32 squares have been cut. The only thing I would say when you choose where to make your cuts I would make them different because if you were to cut four inches across on one side and four inches down on the same side, you would have to match seams with these stars. They are going to be easy to put together. There's not going to be any matching. Once I had them all cut, I took the top white wedge on the right side and put it down on the bottom of that wedge stack. On the smaller little wedges, I went about halfway down the stack just so I could get a nice mix of colors. If you wanted them to be the same, that would be okay too. Um, I just felt like I wanted to mix it up. Well, what we do as quilters is we cut apart fabric, then we put it back together, and that's all we're gonna do here. I'm going to first sew together the wedge, the larger wedge, with my main layer cake piece. I am going to chain piece all the way through my entire stack of 32 and get those large wedges on. Then I'm going to separate the chains, flip the units around, and stitch on the smaller wedges, also chain piecing. Here are what those blocks look like before I press them. And I'm fully expecting to trim these blocks to nine inches because I've got four places where I'm losing a quarter of an inch. Thank you. 
I found it was easiest to trim these blocks by lining the ones on my ruler at the top hand, top right hand up on that top right hand corner, making sure that corner was covered. And then just double checking on the bottom left to make sure that nine inches was covered. Once I trimmed the right side and the top side, I just had to flip the block around, line it up at nine inches and trim the opposite sides. My green mat worked really well until I got to the blocks with the dark outside wedges. Then I flipped my cutting mat over the opposite way so they would show up better under my ruler. With all the extras put away, it's time to lay out these smaller nine inch blocks into a group of four that is going to be stitched together into a giant block. And this is the time to make any color substitutions. If you think that you wanna mix it up a little bit or maybe you wanna have matching blocks, now's the time to figure that out. You could lay the whole thing out on the floor as well if you wanted to, but I wasn't too worried about it. After working with this easy quilt idea, I have another idea. I want to go back to the one cut layer cake block, but then do sashing around the block so that the stars take the center stage. Well, let's skip ahead. Now that I have them all stacked up, it's just a matter of sewing the top two blocks together and then the bottom two blocks together and I'm definitely going to take advantage of chain piecing again. These blocks are super easy to stitch together because we did that different cut where we cut four inches on one side and two inches on the other side. The, there's no matching. They, they don't have to match. It's great. It makes it easy, fast, and you get a cute, cute star pattern as a result. Once I got all of the top row joined together, then I started on the bottom row. As I broke these chains, I was very careful to put these two blocks that have been stitched together back in the exact order and the exact spot where they came from. Now it is time to stitch two blocks together with two other blocks. The only thing I have to match here is that center seam where all four blocks come together. So I'm simply lining up at the top first, then I nest that center seam, making sure one seam's going one way, one seam's going the other way, and I press my finger down to keep it in place until it gets to the needle. Then I match up the end of these two and just finish stitching the line. And since we trim them all carefully to nine inches, you shouldn't have too many problems getting these center seams to match up. Once I had my pairs all stitched into the giant block, now it's time to put two giant blocks together with two other giant blocks. Then I take my group and stitch that together with the other group. So here's a look at what we've got with just four of the giant blocks. We get one center star from that secondary cut that's a little bit smaller than the big stars. Now, if you decided to enlarge this pattern, which I would, I might, um, you would get more of those secondary stars the more you add, or you can make this, the smaller star the star, so to speak, and make the big star in the middle. Now, trimming these to nine inches, I've got a couple of very small quilts. They're a little bit less than 36 by 36 inches. I robbed my stash and I found this blue and this green leftover, and I'm going to use those for borders. So the first thing I did was cut four inch strips. Then I took my four inch strips 
and stitch them together as if I was making binding. I like to do my borders um, similar to binding as far as how to stitch them together. I make a 45 degree angle stitch line, having the corners right sides together. Trim off those excess triangles later and use those later. Once I trimmed off all the triangles, I pressed my border strips seams nice and flat, and then I was ready to stitch these on to the quilts. I like to do borders sometimes where I just have a long strip and I do one side, trim that off, then I start on the next side, trim that off, turn the quilt a quarter turn, and stitch on that side, trim it and then stitch on that very last side and trim it. I hope this video gave you lots of new ideas. Someone asked me in the comments on Layer Cake 14 if I could use charm packs. Well guess what? I'm going to be making a charm pack video with the one cut method. And here is the first time I've ever taken pictures of my quilts on grass, and I just love it. I think the grass makes them look so beautiful. I can't wait to try this in a charm pack idea, and I'll keep you posted. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you back again real soon.